Hi guys, this lesson is on graphing ratio tables. It's from the 6.ns.3 standard. You're going to need your uh, math workbook pages that should be in pocket number two of your folders. We're going to be working on pages 47 through 49 today and you need a pencil. All right, so if we're looking at the first page, page 47, what we want to do is since we're working um, with graphing ratio tables today, it's important for you to know the parts of a coordinate plane. So what you see here in the middle, this guy right over here, this is called a coordinate plane. So go ahead on that top line and write in coordinate plane. Now remember, you may need to pause throughout the video to get all this written down. Okay. Now a coordinate plane has two axes. They've got a vertical one that goes up and down. That's your y-axis. So we're going to label the y-axis right over there. The horizontal axis is the one that's on the bottom. But what's important to also notice is this right over here. If you look at over here where the arrow's pointing on this guy right here, this is um, your origin. So we're going to go ahead and write that in there. And then of course your x-axis is the one that's down here. Now any point that's done on the actual coordinate plane is called an ordered pair. Now there's a reason why it's called an ordered pair. Think of the word order, that means something has to go in order. So you're going to realize in a moment or two um, as we continue that the way that you write the numbers within an ordered pair matters because it has to be in an ordered pair of the x number going first and then the y number coming second. If you look down below at the real world link, it says here, in three minutes, a North American wood turtle can travel about 17 yards. If the x-axis represents minutes and the y-axis represents yards, write an ordered pair to represent the situation. All right, so you'll notice here that they already gave you the parentheses and a comma that separates the two numbers. The x number is the number that goes first. So ordered pairs are always written as the ordered pair x goes first, then y. So in the word problem, it tells us that the turtle travels in three minutes, or the, the amount of time that the turtle's traveling is three minutes. So we want to make sure we put our three in the X spot, which is above where the minutes is, and the 17 to represent the number of yards that it traveled. So now we have the ordered pair 317. Now the way that you read this is exactly the way I said it, the ordered pair 317. A lot of people will say 3 comma 17 or 3... 17, you actually do have to say the words the ordered pair, and that represents that it is a spot on a coordinate plane. Let's go ahead and go to the next page. So over here on the left, you can see that I wrote um, kind of what I was talking about. The x coordinate goes first when you're writing an ordered pair, and of course that means that the y coordinate will then go next. So over here it does tell you that, that you can use an ordered pair to name any point on a coordinate plane. The first number in an ordered pair is the x coordinate, the second number is the y coordinate, and it told you that right over here, and you can see how they have it written. Now to see, um, another thing we're going to be working with today is to see patterns after things are graphed. So in order to do that, well, to see patterns in a table, but in order to do that we would have to graph them. And that's what a lot of this lesson is going to be about. All right, so look at example number one. The table to the right shows the cost in dollars to create CDs of digital photos at a Photoshop. Now you guys, the information in this table is already given to you um, in this one. So the table also shows this information as ordered pairs, which is the number of CDs goes first and the cost in dollars goes next. Now the part we're talking about is this right here. You'll notice here that I put a red box around one and three. So for instance, what it means is if you purchase one CD, the cost would be three dollars. So they wait, the way that they write that is the order pair one three. And that's where the arrow is pointing there. So they just took the first column number and the second column number and they put it together. And you can see that they did the same thing for the remainder. You have a two here and then a six. They put it together for the order pair two six. And you can see here that um, if you look where I'm circling, there's an X here and a Y here. So they already told you that um, the numbers that are in this column over here are going to be your X numbers, which is the first number in an ordered pair. And then, of course, the um, second column is the Y column, and that is the second number in the ordered pair. And if you get confused about what's X, which order is X or Y, think about it. X comes before Y in alphabetical order since it goes X, Y, Z. So hopefully that'll help you remember the order that X goes first and Y goes second. 
Okay, so now, it says here, um, for where it says number one, graph the ordered pair. Now, they've done this for us, but it's important for you to understand which direction to move when you're graphing these ordered pairs. You're going to start at the origin. So we're talking about over here in the corner. Let me put that corner dot there. Hang on one second. Okay, so we're looking at this part right over here where I put a red dot. Now, you don't do that on your graphs, but I just wanted to show you where we're starting. So we're starting right over there. So the first number, or the first ordered pair that we have a red box around in our table above is the ordered pair 1, 3. Now, the 1 tells us um, the x number, and that tells us which direction we're going to walk. So we're actually going to walk in this direction first, and we're walking to the 1. So if I do that over here... Oh, hold on a second, Incoming guys. Call. Press the pickup. All right, sorry about that. So I think what I was saying is when you are graphing the order pair 1, 3, which is the first one that we have a red box around, we're going to walk to the 1, and you can see where I drew that red arrow, and then you climb up to the 3. Hang on, let me fix that better. You climb, and it's not going to like me. And you climb up to the 3, and that's where you will put your dot. So then the next one that I have circled in purple is the order pair 2, 6. So you start at 0 again. You're going to walk to the 2 and then climb up to the 6. And then, of course, the last order pair that you see is the order pair 3, 9. So you walk to the 3 and climb up to the 9, and that's where you're putting your dots. You do not want to draw the lines that I'm showing you here, like the way that you would graph these, which is why I'm erasing them every single time. So off to the side, let's go ahead and just put how to graph. So number one, you're going to start at the origin, which is the ordered pair 0, 0. Number two, you're going to walk to the right, the number of spots that the x-coordinate tells you to, or that it states. And then, of course, step three is you're going to climb up the number of spots the y-coordinate states, and then you're going to put your dot there. So it's really not too bad. So now if you look at part two, or number two, over here where I just drew that red arrow, it says describe the pattern in the graph. Okay, so what we did here is we went ahead and drew our um, three dots over in this area that I just circled. I'm going to take that circle away. And you want to describe what you're seeing, basically. So think about the first dot that you put on there. This is the first dot that we put. Well, the second dot is higher than the first dot, and the third dot is higher than the second and the first dot. So what that represents is an increase. So what it's really saying is um, the cost, so the cost increases by $3 for every CD created. So remember when we were talking about um, in our earlier lesson with the way that you have to write ratios, uh, this is another way that when you're talking about the increase or decrease, it would go downward if it did, um, talking about ordered pairs on a coordinate plane and the pattern, you do want to use this type of verbiage, like this type of language, where you're just saying as the cost increases by, th or so you're saying the cost increases by $3 for every CD that is created or made. Okay, so now it's your turn to give this a try. So go ahead and pause your video and come back after you've done both A and B. It does say part B, describe the pattern, so I do want to see a sentence um, on your papers. Okay, so here you'll see the work. Um, when you're looking at the first order pair, which is the order pair 1, 5, you'll notice that there's not a 5 on our number line. Well, obviously 5 comes between 4 and 6, which is why I planted it in the middle of that um, of those boxes. So you're going to have to do that on occasion. So as far as part B, describe the pattern in the graph. Gloria's earnings increased by $5 for every hour worked. Now the key words that we're looking for when you are writing these descriptions are the words increase or decrease if it's going down. But you definitely want to indicate whether it's an increase or a decrease. So looking at the next page, um, you can use tables and graphs to compare ratios when you're looking at two different things. So the greater the ratio, the steeper the line will appear. So the word steep or steeper, basically in terms of math, um, basically means the more upright it is. So the way I explain it is, imagine riding your bicycle up a... Um, very uh, a hill that's very upright, it would be much steeper than, let's say, going over a little mound um, that barely you barely exert a lot of energy to come across. So the more higher upright, up and down that something is, the steeper it is considered. So if you look at example three, 
It says two friends are making scrapbooks. Brene places four photos on each page of her scrapbook. So if you look at Brene's page um, graph over here, or table, I should say, um, her first scrapbook that she does, or the first page, so on one page she puts four photos. That's where they got the one four for the order pair one four. So think about it. If she makes two pages, each page is going to have four pictures on it, so two pages will have a total of eight pictures on it. So you get the idea of where they got that. Then it says, Gina places six photos on each page of her scrapbook. So here's her graph, and just like Renee's, um, when Gina does one scrapbook page, she's got six pictures on it. When she does two scrapbook pages, she's got a total of 12 pictures on it. So that's where those numbers came from there. So we're going to go on to the next screen to talk about these uh, tables, at least on my thing. On your page, it's directly, it's the same one. So if you look at number four here, it says graph the order pairs for each friend on the same coordinate plane. So it's important for you to understand that you can do this. Now, when you are graphing two different things on the same ordered plane, it is important to... Um, indicate which line belongs or which dots belong to which person. Here they use two different colors. They graphed Renee's um, ordered pairs in blue and they graphed Gina's ordered pairs in red. So, you know, this is a time where you could use your color pencils or a pencil and then maybe a blue pen or a red pen to graph when you're doing two different dot, set of dots on the same plane. So, they've done that. Now number five says, how does the ratio of photos to each page compare for each person? How is this shown on the graph? Now they've got the answer for you right over here. And you can see it's it's like a, a small little mini paragraph. So it is important that you do understand how to, um, to read this and to understand that when you are asked to compare two different things, you're able to use, you know, similar words and verbiage. So it says here, the ratio of photos to pages for Renee's scrapbook is four to one while the ratio for Gina's scrapbook is six to one. Now they gave that part, if you remember, back in the actual word problem situation. So on my thing here, it's on my previous screen, but you'll see here, they gave it to you right over here, four photos on each page for Renee, six photos on each page for Gina. So you're getting the ratio of four to one and six to one. So then it says, on the graph, both sets of points appear to be in a straight line. So meaning like if I were to connect the dots, I would end up getting a straight line. So, so the, the red dots would be one line, the blue dots would be another line. And then it does say, but Gina's line is steeper than the line for Renee. So if you look at the red ones over here, so we're looking at the red lines, these guys right over here, they're steeper and we know that because they, they appear to be much more upright, like more up and down than Renee's. Yes, Gina's lines are not very up down, but they are more up and down than Renee's are. All right guys, that's it for this lesson. Be sure to complete your assignment that you were given in class and we'll see you back.